Hello, my name is Lindy Kelly, and I'm excited today to present a research proposal on the effects of visual meal guides on the nutritional knowledge of NCAA Division III freshman football athletes. To provide some background on this topic, it's important to identify that there is a gap in the literature in regards to the unique experience of collegiate freshmen, the nutritional needs of competitive collegiate Division III football athletes, and the use of visual education tools in increasing nutritional knowledge. So the research question we'll seek to answer is, will visual meal plate guides improve the nutritional knowledge of NCAA Division III freshman football athletes? In order to answer that question, we'll start out with a bit of a literature review. It's important to understand the competitive level these athletes are at, the Division III, within the National Collegiate Athletic Association. There are Divisions I and II, which offer athletic scholarships and therefore have a lot more resources for their student athletes. But it's important to note that Division III is the NCAA's largest and that 36.7% of NCAA student athletes compete voluntarily for the love of the sport at the Division III level. And only 3.18% of the entire operating budget for the NCAA is allocated to uh, Division III. So they have far less resources and often that means they do not have nutrition education opportunities. Football athletes specifically are particularly interesting. Abby et al. found that Division III football linemen in particular are susceptible to radical body composition changes. They need to be the largest on the field, have the largest body mass, but they often don't know how to successfully do that, and they'll eat anything they can. Um, and they often rely on questionable sources of information, um, and therefore don't have a high level of nutrition education prior to um, their careers at their institutions um, and often throughout their careers. John Aldega et al. found that Division I freshman um, football athletes uh, fare better when their nutrition education is initiated earlier in their career, although they do have many nutritional misconceptions in general when they first arrive. So it's important to help educate them early on. Jagam et al. looked at position specifics within Division III football. Um, and what they found was that almost all of the athletes, regardless of position, but um, more so for the linemen, had a lack of caloric intake on the days where they had multiple training sessions. So they're eating less when training more, and that was attributed to their survey response um, of not understanding that they should have been upping their caloric intake um, instead of eating less. And really, they just concluded that Division three athletes are just more susceptible to nutritional deficiencies overall. Thirdly, the visual education aspect. Lee et al. did a meta-analysis of visualized nutrition education tools that included video, print, um, and social media type things. And they found that culturally tailored, succinct, and serial or delivered in series um, uh, visual tools worked best for people. And they showed that they had better effects on dietary behavior with visual tools than non-visualized or with no education. Um, and this was a general population study. Perkin et al. found that review um, of the use of the plate model, which we'll be discussing in depth in a bit, um, was useful for dietary education. There are many different models being used, but the athlete plate is what we'll specifically focus on. And it was the best on emphasizing the connection between diet and exercise. Finally, the last study found um, or was the first, excuse me, to actually validate the use of the athlete plate model. It does meet the nutritional needs of varying intensity levels for training, which is key, although they did conclude that further research on macronutrient recommendations would be beneficial, especially for protein. This is what the athlete plate looks like based on training intensity. The first is an easy day, the second is a moderate day, and the third is a hard training day or a game day. So each of the three meals for the day should reflect this plate, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, depending on their training intensities. So for the study design, it's a quantitative analysis. It's quasi-experimental in design. It would be a non-randomized control group, so only one group without a comparison. They would be compared to themselves uh, pre-test and post-test post after the intervention. Um, and the study would run about 18 weeks in duration, which is basically the competitive season for football. The data collection would be completed using the Nutrition for Sport Knowledge Questionnaire, the NSKQ. It has 89 questions and six subsections that have to do with demographics of the individual, uh, macronutrients, micronutrients, hydration status, weight management, um, nutrient timing, etc. 
the pre-test would be delivered in the first week of training camp in August. The post-test would be taken in November and the last week of the season. And it would be done electronically um, under surveillance of um, the lead researcher. The participant demographics, uh, the study population would be Division Three football athletes. They have to be freshman or first year athletes, meaning they've not competed before at this level, which is the exclusionary factor. The population size would be about 40, which is the incoming group of this particular team at this institution. Um, they would voluntarily choose to participate without repercussion from their head coach, was in, which is important to ensure an ethical approach. Um, and then they would be recruited in an in-person informational session. The intervention would include an initial meeting to administer the NSKQ, followed by an orientation the same day to participate uh, to the participants on how to reference the athlete plates and how to use them. Um, the student athletes would be provided with the three plates laminated on cards with a metal ring so they're easy to keep in their backpack on hand for the semester. And the athlete plates would be used at every major meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the duration of the study. In terms of statistical analyses, uh, we'd be using descriptive statistics, the uh, mean and the standard deviation of each of the 89 data points in the survey would uh, be compared for the group both pre and post. We would be comparing each individual data point for the athlete pre and post um, using a matched pairs t-test as well as a p-value um, set at 0.05. Discussion-wise, there are some limitations and strengths to the study. The study design is susceptible to threats from internal validity, just being a quasi-experimental design. We'll be using a treatment-assigned approach, meaning that we would not be excluding any data where the athletes forgot to use their, um, their athlete plates because it's a real-world approach, and that's what athletics is. Um, it could be susceptible to the Hawthorne effect, meaning that they we may see some some positive behavior changes, knowing that they are being tested in the end um, on this particular material, that could be a strength as well. Um, but they may change their behavior and ultimately that could affect um, things down the road. And it is a small population size. In terms of key strengths, the topic is timely and the, uh, it's of great value to NCAA Division III and football specifically. At this time, there's a, um, the sport's underneath a microscope, uh, underneath a microscope in terms of how athletes are um, being treated and handled. Um, it's clinically, we would be using a clinically valid and tested data collection tool in the NSKQ, um, and it really will add the study a needed context to a very small pool of research um, overall. So some future research ideas, things to think about. There are trends in nutritional education for collegiate athletes. Um, I think that the whole idea of it is trending up. Um, there's further exploration of visual nutrition education tools for athletes. Um, it's been done a lot with general population, but not so much with athletes. And looking at male versus female collegiate athletes would be important as well. So here are my references, and I really very much appreciate your time today, and I'm looking forward to your feedback. Thank you.